Hello, my name is Jacob Avila from the Core Ultrasound Image Review, and today we have a special guest host, Jessica Hauk. How are you, Jessica? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Thanks. Good. Thanks so much for asking. Uh, Jessica is from Louisville originally, did her residency in Florida, and is now back as one of the attendings at the University of Kentucky at Lexington. And we're so happy to have you, and we're so happy to talk about some ultrasound yeah. stuff. let's do it. Shall we dive right in? I think so. All right, so this is our first image right here. Now, what this is a it's bladder, right? This has to be a bladder. It looks it's like circular. a bladder. Yeah, I think they need to pee. <laughs> That's right. Uh, this is we got liver over here. We got gallbladder over here. Now there are stones, right? I mean, that's what we got here. This like kind of white stuff, this hypercoic stuff with the shadowing underneath it. But like the image, I don't like it very much. Like what what is it about this image that I guess doesn't look good? Well, I think one thing is that there half of the image has poor contact. If you look at the right side of the Over image, here? yes. Yeah. So I think contact and positioning is really important. I agree with you. Um, I think that probably they were below the ribs or right at the rib margin um, right here. So a couple of things that I usually suggest is roll to the left lateral cubitus. It swings the liver out, um, you know, from underneath the ribs. And then taking a big breath in is actually huge because mm -hmm. the whole thing, I mean, I didn't know this, yeah. but like nothing is like set in the yeah. body. Like everything is mobile. If you take a breath, like the whole liver will move down yeah. with the diaphragm. So I do that a lot with fast when I'm looking for the oh, spleen. Really? I'm like, take a big deep breath. Sometimes brilliant. you can't find the spleen. Yeah. yeah that's brilliant. Brings that spleen into view. This is another kind of disgusting gallbladder. A little better view. Yeah. Right. Um, what do you make of this gallbladder? Sick or not sick? I think it looks pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. It looks pretty bad. I'm going to freeze it and bring it to right here. We have a, a couple of findings. So we got this one, right? Super easy. We got the gallstones with the shattering behind it. And then we have this, which is not quite shadowing. Do you know what that is, Jessica? Yeah, it looks like sludge. It's sludge for sure. I, and I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like it's a precursor to stones. Hmm. I, mean, I, mean, I don't know. Is yeah, that I don't right? know. That sounds right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, um, but it's it's stagnant bile for for you know in the least, and then we also have what looks like a thickened wall here. Definitely. So we have like all of the signs. Now, I wanted to point out this guy right here. So this is the portal triad. Some people kind of talk about this as like a Mickey Mouse sign, and this would be like Mickey Mouse's head, and this is the ears. But like his ears aren't that small. Yeah, no, they're pretty big. To me, this looks like a screaming person. I like it. Like two eyes wide because they're terrified. Yeah. And then like a very screamy portal vein right there, yeah. right? That's yeah. what it looks like to me. Um, Never forget that. <laughs> it's, it's a screamy portal vein. Um, here's another view of it. Now, one thing with that portal triad is people will talk about like you look for the hepatic artery in the portal vein because one's always on one side and one's always mm -hmm. on the other side. But it turns out that 15% of the time, one five, it's actually going to be flipped. Okay. So to me, like 15% of the time, it's going to be different. Like that is not enough. Yeah. For me to say like... It's not a rule. It's not a rule. Yeah. It's not a rule. I mean, if it was like 5%, I'd be like, it's too much. Yeah. You know, but 15% is high. So always throw color flow. The one that doesn't have pulsatile flow is the common bile duct. Now, one thing I will say is that if the, I guess the eyes of the screamy guy, yep. if they are equal, so if mm -hmm. this is about equal size to this, I've never seen an enlarged common bile duct when these two are equal. Okay. So that's kind of like yeah. my little like rule of thumb. Yeah. I do something similar for the aorta, by the way, which I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you about. We actually have an amazing aorta scan that um, mm. we're gonna show in a little Can't bit. Can't wait. Yeah, it was just like this month. It was just like gallbladder pathology month. Yeah, yeah. This one is massive, right? And then that thing that you were talking about right here, all that sludge. Oh yeah. There's a bunch of that here. Yep. I think they're actually. If we look here, maybe stones up here. Like I don't know. It looks like a regular. I don't see a whole lot of shadow. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. I think this patient actually had a calculus cholecystitis, mm -hmm. which you see, like, you know, whatever an elderly mm -hmm. population, yep. a little bit more sick patients. Whoa. Another bladder. It's another bladder. It's another circular thing. This that looks is, pretty scary. It is terrifying, right? This is like the biggest AAA, like, that I've seen last I time. don't think I've ever seen a AAA that big. We, I've seen a couple. This is quite large for sure. This yeah. is, I don't remember what the exact measurement of, is of this. Key here is that we may want to just measure this, uh -huh. you know, from here to here. And I'll tell you that this is enlarged, right? If we just looked at the lumen, yeah, but the actual absolutely. aorta is probably here 
to here, very likely. So you just got to measure outer wall, wow. outer wall. Yeah. Now, the first time I saw this right here, Jessica, this little guy right here, uh-huh. I thought that that was extra. I was like, for sure, this is extra. Yeah. This is leaking. Yeah. Can you tell me what it actually is? You know, I think it might be the IVC. I think it's a, it's a smushed IVC. Yeah, I think I, it's it a was, smushed IVC. Yeah, you're smarter than me. Like when I first saw that, I was like freaking out. It was like the first time I saw a moderator band, which will show one in the right ventricle. We'll show one in a couple of, of clips. First time I saw a moderator band, I thought it was a clot in the right ventricle and a yeah. tech like, you know, educated me in a nice way. Uh. But yeah, you've educated me. This is the IVC, not a leak. Now, remember how I was saying that I compare the hepatic artery to the cone bile duct, mm-hmm. right? To mm-hmm. relative sizes. I don't actually like measuring things. I don't like pressing more buttons if I don't have oh, to. Really? It's just more work. Yeah, I don't like true. doing more work. I like to tell people that it's because I like to work smarter, not harder, but really I'm just lazy. Okay. That's really what it is. Yeah. I just don't want to do extra work if I don't have to. This guy right here, this is a vertebral body, right? From like, yep. this is like the arch of it right here. Mm-hmm. And the average width of the vertebral body is five centimeters in elderly men. So like greater than like 60, okay. which is the patient in which you're more likely to see triple A's in the first right. place. So mm-hmm. if I see this right here and the aorta is greater than about half of the width of the whole thing, that's when I measure it. If it's mm-hmm. less than the width of this whole thing, you're good. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. You know what I mean? The likelihood of it being greater than three, which is greater than half, it's like super yeah. low, right? So no, that makes sense. You want, should we do a study on it? There's no, no studies that do this. Yeah. I just like thought about this like five years ago and I haven't actually like. I think that sounds it. brilliant. All right. That's going to be our study this year. All right. What do we got here? Hmm. Looks like a positive fast exam. Mm-hmm. Now, the one thing that is uh, great that I love about this image is the fact that we have this guy right here. So part of me looks at this right here and yep. thinks that is clot. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now what do you think? What 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 would that be if it wasn't clot? Is that a fat pad? It is a fat pad. It is a quite prominent fat pad. It is pretty prominent. It is very yeah. like it's very high and it's there's a couple of reasons why it's a fat pad. The first one is we can see the fluid, very hypoechoic fluid up here. It staying stuck right on the kidney, right? Blood mm-hmm. would not, or at least free clot wouldn't be stuck like right on it. It's a little more hyperechoic, fat's more hyperechoic. But I can see, and I've seen this before, where like, let's say you don't have the actual blood, you might confuse this for clots. So it's just something you gotta be super like cognizant enough to make sure that you know like renal fat pads can look a little bit like clot, but they're like pericardial fat pads Mm. in which the way that you know it's pericardial fat pad is it moves exactly with the heart when it beats. Whereas a clot would like, jiggle mm-hmm. basically apart from the actual heart oh, this is one of my favorite things this looks to see. pretty advanced it well, we're using color doppler for sure and this was i'm so happy because sometimes our residents they don't really like 100 percent know the nuances but they will try which yeah. i appreciate yeah so i i take you know when i'm doing these images i usually like take away the color uh-huh. kind of markers but blue is going down the flow is going away from the transducer which is up here and then red's going towards right okay this is a peritoneal axis for you. Blood should move from the left atrium to the right ventricle. It should not move this way. And this right here, we're seeing some mitral regurgitation because we're seeing blue coming back into the atrium. This box is kind of in the wrong spot though. I'll show you the next image here. This is still not in the best spot, but it's in a much better spot. When you're looking for regurg, you actually want to look into the chamber okay. where the blood is regurgitating into. So, so just the like, atrium, yeah. Exactly, yeah. the atrium. Like basically every single time you're looking for a, you know, for mitral or tricuspid regurg, look in the atrium. Okay. Yeah, and then this would actually, right here, would be great for aortic regurg because we're seeing a great view of the left ventricular yeah. outflow tract, which is like what we'd want to see. Ooh. All right, oh, I, got right. A, I got a scenario for you. Okay. All right. Scenario is somebody, it's a code. Okay. You're doing your pause. Mm-hmm. And you're, you know, rhythm eight, check, rhythm check pulse, your yeah. rhythm check. You can't feel a pulse okay. and you're not seeing any electrical activity on the monitor, but you see this on your ultrasound. Okay. What would be appropriate to do with this ultrasound? Ooh. It's well, kind of a tricky one. It's it, subtle. It, it, that's tricky. That's very yeah. subtle. So if you want to call this fine V-fib, I would shock it. I agree with you. Yeah. Great. Now the key here, I mean, if you're not paying attention to it, you might miss it. Yeah. So these these bubbles right here are like probably some stagnant blood, some normal saline or lactate ringers, whatever you mm-hmm. use, like kind of the bubbles of it not really moving very well through the right ventricle, which mm-hmm. we see in codes. You see how there's a lot of wiggling of these bubbles? 
that is basically how you identify VFib. Mm. Is are those bubbles wiggly or mm-hmm. not? It's yeah. probably the most common way that I think you find these things. Okay. And this is important because even if there's no electrical activity, we can see that there is movement there. Yeah. And it's very wiggly. Yeah, objective moving. sign. Yeah, I exactly, love it. Exactly, exactly. And you see this, you don't have to wait 10 seconds, right? If I see this, I tell them to shock yeah. even if you know somebody has, hasn't had enough time to check the pulse. Like It's just it's time to shock mm-hmm. out of that BFib. Oh, this is one of my favorite findings. I have a lot of favorite findings, by the do way. Do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Most of them are favorite findings. What, what are we looking at here? Uh, it looks like an apical floor chamber. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Looking at the right side of the heart. Yep. This thing right here. Yes. Right uh-huh. ventricle. Mm-hmm. Looks like it's not moving so well. Looks like the apex isn't moving. I right. think they have a name for that. So right here, we have a hypokinetic lateral wall yep. of the right ventricle. Mm-hmm. And then this little guy is a little more movey than the lateral wall right here, right? This is a McConnell sign. So we're seeing enlarged right ventricle compared to the left ventricle. Yep. And then we're seeing a hyperdynamic apex right here. This means acute right heart enlargement, which in the past we used to say it always means a PE, mm-hmm. but it could be an RVMI and it could be like acute corporal myelite. Anything okay. that means acute right heart. Okay. Right. Most of the time in our patients, it's probably PE. Right? Yeah. Although, and that's what we can fix too. Yeah, we yeah. can actually fix that. Yeah. Although I think, I imagine if we echoed everybody and the cardiology literature actually supports this, we would probably find that COPD ears are the most common cause of this. Okay. It's really weird. It's like if you take everybody who has ever been ultrasounded, this is not specific for PE. Mm. It's just specific for acute right heart pathology, which could be like, you know, Palmer one of those hypertension. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then this is chronic right heart enlargement, just to compare the apices. So that, that apex right there, this apex, this one's yes. moving a lot more than this one. This is chronic right heart enlargement. The other thing too is that check out how big that atria is. This is the mm-hmm. right atrium, which is It's had massive. time to enlarge. Yeah. Exactly. It's had time to enlarge. Exactly right. Brilliant. All right. This is, we never see this, right? The IV drug user comes in with shortness never. of breath. We never see this. I mean, yeah. these days we, we probably just automatically think it's COVID and then yeah. we you know, we, we got to be careful. It's one of the things I talked about on a podcast a little while ago with some guys out from California about how you can't pigeonhole yourself yes. into everybody's mm-hmm. COVID. Yes. If you look and have You're gonna miss this, things. like mm-hmm. this, yep. right? What, what Especially are we, in our population. Yeah. yeah. It's unfortunate, but we yeah. have it. Well, what are we looking at here, Jessica? So here, this is probably an IV drug abuser that's mm-hmm. coming in with chest pain, tachycardia, yep. fever, mm-hmm. maybe some of the Jones criteria. Right. If you look at that aortic valve, you can right kind here. of see a little vegetation. Yeah. This is aortic endocarditis, which is a little, in the grand scheme of things, it's very common. But in our population, this is the most common. This is a peritoneal short axis view. And we have right here a tricuspid endocarditis. Now, I don't have data to support this, but I swear every time that I see it, it's actually tricuspid endocarditis. But mm. if you look at the literature... It's not the most common. Hmm. Left-sided endocarditis is more common hmm. in like regular, I guess a regular population, but yeah. here, I mean, right? I mean, I feel like all we see is tricuspid. Like yeah. It's always like pulmonary manifestations in tricuspid endocarditis. All right, we're going to move on away from the life-threatening stuff into vision-threatening things. I love this. This is it's one of like the it's great. funnest findings. It's I so think. satisfying. It's so satisfying. I mean, you're done. You're done. You see it. You, you know what you, to do. Exactly. You're done. You have this little flaily thingy right here. Mm-hmm. This is an eyeball, posterior chamber, anterior chamber. And then the key, so there's flappy things. There shouldn't be little flappy things in the in the, in the the eye. The key is this guy right here. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a retinal attachment, right? I'm like 99% yeah. sure this is a retinal attachment. I'd be 100% sure if I could easily see this retinal detachment attached directly mm-hmm. to that optic nerve. That's, you know what I mean? Because you can kind of see it like right there for like a second. Yes, like right yeah, if you look here. very closely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can yeah. see that it's pretty attached, but... What I like to see is a little more depth to make sure I can see the optic nerve, identify the optic nerve, and then have the patient look left and right repeatedly. Mm-hmm. That's probably the best way to do it. Okay. And what is the alternative to that? It's that you can get a vitreous attachment. Yeah. So and that's vit- what we're looking for. So what would be what would be the difference between this and a vitreous attachment? Like where would that wavy line be? Well, that wavy line would cross that optic nerve. Right. And that's what the biggest right thing you're looking like for. Yep. Brilliant. Yeah. And there's been like a lot of studies that have actually looked at the accuracy, and we do pretty good as far yeah. as specificity, and even some studies get sensitivity as well. Nice. We're now moving on to my favorite part of ultrasound. Oh, really? Yeah. Your third lungs. favorite, fourth favorite? Yeah. You know, lungs are my number one. And uh. then probably, I'll say like vascular access is my second favorite thing okay. to do because it's like, it's very useful. And then like cardiac and then aorta and then like everything else. And I like okay. MSK and I like bowel. Mm-hmm. I, just, I like all of it. Okay. 
But lungs are by far my favorite. Well, it is a pretty fun picture. I think so. Yeah. I mean, you got this guy right here, which one of my buddies calls this the Gumby sign. He says it looks like Gumby, like this is the face and that's the mouth. I don't really like see it. I say Yorda. I don't really see it, but somebody calls it. What's this guy right here? It's like a dancing lung. It is a dancing lung. It's, it's a compressed lung within this big effusion right mm -hmm. here. Now, I got a question for you. Yeah. Have you heard of a plankton sign? I have not heard of a plankton sign. Sweet. So it's something that we don't talk about a whole lot. And the reason why is because there's actually not a whole lot of evidence behind it. It's okay. just people talk about it. Another so study? You, another study that yeah. we will do. Yeah, it's great because we do, we do a fair bit of thoracentesis yeah. at our hospital too. You see how this is kind of echogenic on the inside? It's I do. It's not black like Almost like sludge. Thing. Yeah. It almost looks like sludge. Yeah. So if you see that, it looks like plankton kind of rolling around in like a bowl or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's thought to be the plankton sign and more indicative of an exudative effusion. That versus, makes sense. Yeah, versus yeah. a transudative effusion, which yeah. would be completely anechoic. Yeah. There's no studies to back this up, though. Mm. Like, there's like a couple mm. of single center, but not like big studies. So I don't know. I, I, you Seems like it'd be pretty easy to... I think so. Yeah. I think so. Next study. We'll have two. Two ready to go. We're seeing a lot more of this in patients. These uh, vertical artifacts right yeah. here. So I think... But what is this first off? Well, these are B lines. These are B lines. And I think that the most common reason that I'll look for these is di differentiating COPD from CHF. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of cardiac asthma before? No. So cardiac asthma is this thing where you will have wet lungs but still have wheezing. And it has to do with like the water itself narrowing right. the airway. Yes. So like we see that. And then we see patients that have COPD that have crackles. Right? So this right here has a much higher positive and negative likelihood ratio for ruling in CHF. Okay. So this is like the most common reason I use it. Although I will say like these days, especially with our, we're in our, let's see, it's November. Mm -hmm. It's like mid to late November of 2020. We're yeah. in like our third kind of peak of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so I'm usually seeing this these days as signs of COVID. It's, mm -hmm. usually what I'm it's one of the signs of COVID that you can see. And then these little guys right here, little ribs. Yep. I like using the curvilinear transducer when I'm looking at this. Like, do you, really? use, do you use the phase or the linear? Like, how are you usually looking for um, I like the linear. It lets me zone that. in. But yeah. this gives you a deeper view, so. Yeah, there's pros and cons. Yeah. I, think it's, I think it's personal preference. Yeah. I think as long as you are taking off the artifact settings on any of the probes that you use, mm -hmm. I think, like, you'll be able to identify this stuff. No problem. And, you know, of course, with the linear, they must be thin. Yeah. You only yeah, have six, yeah. seven centimeters, so. That's a very good point. And we have a lot of thin patients where we work, so. Linear is good. All right. So that's it. That was great. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, this is of course. Amazing. This we is will, amazing. We'll have you back in my uh, my basement studio here. I love it. I love we'll the bar and all the bourbon. This is <laughs> Thank great. You. Yeah, you guys can't see it, but right behind the camera is like all my bourbon. He's um, got some W.L. Weller. Yeah. Yep. I was told that was good bourbon. I'm still... He finished it. It's empty. I finished it. It was actually yeah. really good. It was actually good. Yeah. All right. We'll have you here sometime in the future. Yeah, so sounds good. Thanks.